A simple balance is made by a horizontal handle spring with a known spring constant of k equal to 380 newton over millimeter and a ruler as shown in this figure. By the way, spring constant shows how much force would develop in spring if it's being compressed by one unit. In this case, if we compress the spring by one millimeter, there will be an internal force of 380 newton which is pushing back. So in this case, after the force P is applied on the handle, the left hand side of this handle, which is shown by C, is moving downward by one millimeter. We want to know how much is the magnitude of force that is causing that movement downward by one millimeter. In other words, we want to relate the movement of the handle to the weight of whatever we put on top of that handle. All right, in order to solve this problem, first, we need to somehow relate the deformation in the handle to the deformation of the spring. And in order to do that, we need to use a concept that we have used several times in our course, and that is the similar triangle. But where are those triangles? How can I identify those triangles? In order to identify those triangles, I need to see how the handle would move after applying the force. In this case, we can see there is a support at the right side, which means that it is holding the handle from moving up or down, but it allows the handle to tilt around point A. Once force P is applied, the handle would move downward like this. And I assume that the reading on the left side is a one millimeter, which is shown by delta C. We can relate that to the deformation in spring using these two triangles that we see. We can say that the deformation at C, which is delta C, divided by the length of that triangle, which is A plus B, is equal to the deformation of spring, which is shown as delta B, divided by the length of that green triangle, which is B. So joint C has moved downward by one millimeter. I'm going to plug A and B. And from that, we can identify that spring is being compressed by 0 0.625 millimeter. Now I need to find out how much would be the force developed in that spring because of that downward compression. As I said, spring constant relates the force to the deformation. So force is going to be equal to deformation multiplied by the spring constant, which is shown by k. So this is going to be the force that is developed because of the movement of joint B downward. But is this the final answer for this problem? Is this equal to the external force acting here? No, these two forces are not equal to each other because this element is pent at the right side and there is a reaction force here. In order to calculate that, I need to use another concept that we have learned previously in statics and that is the free body diagram. I need to take out that handle, put all the forces and use equilibrium equation to determine the magnitude of force P. The free body diagram is shown here. So this handle is taken out there will be two forces. One of them is the force developed in spring. I'm going to call that F sub spring. And there will be another external force acting at distance of X from the right support, which is called P. Also, there will be two reaction forces at point A. But I'm not interested in determining the magnitude of those forces. So I would simply take them out. And I would just use some of the moments about A in order to find a relationship between external force P and force in the spring. So some of the moments about A should be equal to zero, and that means that force in spring multiplied by its distance to A, which is shown by B, is equal to force P multiplied by its distance to A, which is shown by X. So from that, we can determine how much is the magnitude of P based on B, X, and force in spring. And this is going to be the final answer for this problem.